Okay, so we are live on Facebook. We'll give everyone a second to kind of hop on and I'm gonna share this in all the places that it needs to be shared, but we are here in Brand Boldly for service-based entrepreneurs to have Spotlight Sunday. So this is Spotlight Sunday. I know there are a lot of new people in this group. So if you don't mind real quick, Jennifer, before we get started, I just wanna kind of go over Spotlight Sunday and what it is and how awesome it is. So for those of you that are new, this is an opportunity for every single person in this group to come on live with me and just share, share your thing, share your message. So I fully, fully believe <laughs> there is no such thing as competition. Um, all of us are you know, unique and have all of our unique skills to share. And I want everybody to come in and share them. So hopefully everyone in this group will sign up for Spotlight Sunday. It doesn't have to be anything biz related, business related as we have a perfect example today. Just whatever your business is, come on, share your message, get your, get your eyeballs on, more eyeballs on your stuff. And it's super, super fun. So that's for those of you who have no idea what we're doing on here. Um, today we have Jennifer and she is a total badass. I can tell just from your, <laughs> your marketing materials that I have seen. So um, I will let you just kind of take over real quick and introduce yourself. If you want to tell us kind of how you got started and um, you know, just a little bit about you and your business and all of that stuff. That would be great. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, my name is Jennifer Walls and um, the, the name of my business is Sacred Intimacy Beyond Intercourse. Um, I primarily deal with um, helping people overcome the roadblocks to sacred intimacy. And um, I find one of the, the biggest roadblocks is some type of childhood trauma. It doesn't necessarily always have to be sexual trauma. It could be, um, you know, physical abuse. It could be emotional abuse. It could just be being raised in a family where, you know, you, you're watching your parents fight all the time or you're being neglected, mm -hmm. um, you know, and also the type of boundaries that we had in childhood that kind of tends to um, reflect our boundaries in adulthood. Yeah. So um if you were raised with like strict parents and you really weren't given a lot about like you, you weren't allowed to have your own boundaries. Um, you might grow up to be kind of a codependent person that doesn't know how to set those boundaries. Mm -hmm. And then if you're somebody that, you know, was able to run free and do whatever you want, or you got spoiled or you never heard the word, <laughs> no, then you don't really respect boundaries, you know, in, mm -hmm. in adulthood, you know, that's typically, you know, from what I've seen with some of my clients and the work that I've done, but um, like I said, the, the biggest roadblock tends to be some type of trauma. And even like, you know, th there's other things too. There's plenty of other things like addictions and stuff. But a lot of time those addictions are rooted into some kind of trauma as well. Mm -hmm. And those things prevent us from having a healthy, um, balanced relationship because you have two people going in with all this stuff that they've never worked through. And so they're getting triggered by each other and you're always fighting and arguing. And then, you know, you know, sometimes there's voids in that relationship and then, you know, they bring a child into that relationship and then the whole cycle starts all over again. So what I'm trying to do is bring my clients to a place of balance where they're balanced within and then they enter into a relationship healthy and whole and the relationship isn't about fighting and arguing and they can raise healthy children to, you know, yeah. to continue that cycle instead of that cycle of abuse and neglect and, you know, those, you know, poor boundaries. But um, also, you know, I find with a lot of my clients too, um, you know, I have clients that have been together 10, 15, 20 years and they don't communicate <laughs> and they don't, they have sex and they have this relationship, but they don't have real intimacy in their relationship. So I've seen, you know, clients, you know, like I had one guy, he, you know, he says he just wants to hold his woman sometime, but he's uncomfortable. Sometimes he just, he doesn't want to delete the sex, you know, so he gets nervous and he gets performance anxiety. So he doesn't always want to delete the sex. And I said, well, you know, my first question to clients is always, do you communicate this? Have you, you know, told your partner this? And the answer is always no. And I'm like, you've been together 10 years, 20 years. How can you not? have this conversation like it's it, you would think that some somebody with that you know much time invested into a relationship that they could talk about those things but they don't yeah. and you know and so the way my business sort of came about was was through a writing prompt I had a I had taken a writing class and oh, I was wow. asked to write about um a soulful encounter and I um I wrote about my first love and um what during that process of writing the story I started asking myself some questions like, 
what is it that separate separated this relationship from all the other bad ones that came after because this was like a perfect relationship there was so much intimacy and connection and um, communication and that was a struggle in every relationship that followed and what I realized is that it was really the length of time that was invested in that relationship we took time to be- become best friends before we ever became lovers so you know, that's where the name kind of came from because we had this level of sacred intimacy before we ever had intercourse and it was just a beautiful relationship. And then I went into every relationship expecting that and never could (laughs) find it, but I never took the time to really invest in those relationships. So that kind of, you know, started the business name for me and the Mm -hmm. whole, um, the whole concept of creating intimacy and relationships and, and, and focusing on that because, you know, there's a lot of people that focus like relationship coaches that focus on relationships and love and sex, and that's all great. And, and, you know, uh, you know, there's value in that, but to me, the sex, it's just sex. If there's no intimacy, it's just sex. It's, it's very empty and you, and something's missing. Mm -hmm. It's easy to have sex. It's very difficult and scary to be intimate because you have to allow that person into the deepest, scariest parts of yourself. And not a lot of people can do that. Like some of these people have been married 20 years and they can't do it. That's so true. So true. I love that. So I think that's super, super important for sure. And I'm so excited to like dig all into this. So let me like pull this up. Anyone that's here, I see there's people here watching. Let us know that you're here. Say hi, first of all. But so before we like dig in too far, I gotta, I have to interrupt you and ask my branding question because I have to ask everybody. But so like when, as you have started this whole journey, how, how has, you know, building a brand around this core message and all of these things that are so important, how has, you know, building that brand played into your business and your offers or um, well, the, the branding was totally accidental. Like I said, the name <laughs> came up from, from a writing prompt, but then and it was personal to me, the name. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess with, you know, I, then I created a program called Overcoming the, um, the Blocks, the Roadblocks mm-hmm. to Sacred Intimacy. So it kind of all ties in, like everything that I do ties in together, the writing, the trauma work, the intimacy coaching, it all ties in together. Um, I haven't really done too much with the branding. Like I'm really yeah. I'm wanting, I'm wanting to, to, to do more, to pull it in together tighter, but yeah. I feel like what I have done so far, I mean, it's definitely, um, it's, it's definitely gotten me noticed. Like I have yeah. people that are reaching out they're like, I really love your concepts and your ideas and, and you know what you're doing with that. And that's, and that's really the most important part of branding, right? Like that core message and making sure that comes through. So all the design and all of that stuff is just like, you know, the, the cherry on top. So I think that's a great place to be. Like you have, you have the foundation, you have all of the pieces there now, just like you said, bring it together. So I love that. So, okay. That's out of the way. Let's, let's, let's get back to you. (laughs) So, um, so you said you're a writer and a coach and a massage therapist too, right? So is that part of your whole, your, your brand as well, or is that separate or it's, it's helped me tremendously. I mean, I've been doing massage for about eight, almost 18 years now. And what that's helped me with is that in the massage room, I'm, um, you know, I have a lot of clients that they're not, uh, they're not just coming to me like a massage therapist. They're also like, I'm like their, their mental therapist too, because Mm -hmm. they, they let go. They tell me everything. So they're telling me about their divorces their you know, their kids, everything. So in what I've found is like, in massage therapy gave me the key to coaching, which is listening, cool. just really listening to your client and hearing them, but also hearing what they're not saying too. Like, yeah. so being a massage therapist, I started reading people's energy and intuitively just kind of feeling, you know, like somebody might be saying one thing, but you know, cause sometimes you're, you're massaging and I'm like, Oh, that doesn't hurt. But they're like, you know, about to jump yeah. off the table, <laughs> but you know, the body mechanics, you know, the energy. Um, yeah. so I've incorporated that into my coaching. Cause when I started out coaching, I was, it was like, I, I took the NLP training and all of that. And I kept trying to apply all these NLP techniques to like almost every client. And they, it didn't always feel right. It felt, yeah. you know, felt, you know, difficult and inauthentic. But when I just started applying that same kind of, you know, same way that I do with massage therapy, you know, I threw out the cookie cutter routine and I just started doing what felt right to me and to my clients. And mm-hmm. So basically the first step is listening, you know, yeah. just listening to them, 
and hearing them out and then kind of assessing what you think, you know, what you might feel it might be. But then I go, you know, I incorporate the writing, um, the writing prompts, but then when I'm actually talking to them, I'll ask a lot of questions because this is something I started doing in massage therapy. You know, they, they, they'll tell me stuff and then I ask a lot of questions and usually those questions lead them to their own aha, like, yeah. oh, I didn't realize that. Like, so it's kind of like the questioning is leading them into their own mind mm-hmm. and, and unravel because I'm not really doing anything. I'm just kind of <laughs> bringing them back to themselves and, and, yeah. and giving them those questions to kind of get things cooking and wondering what, you know, leading them where they need to go. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, so the writing, the writing was my therapy. So that's why I've incorporated it into my business because sitting down to write my book that, you know, that opened up all those doorways for me. And I started asking all my own questions of myself and that became my therapy and how, how I've, you know, healed from my own trauma. So, um, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to help my clients with the things that helped me, you know, cool. like, you know, we teach what we know. Yeah. No, I love that. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. So, so let's talk about like your, you know, what we came on here to talk about too, your whole process and you know, how this trauma affects you later. So what is like, what do you feel like is the main number one thing that you want to get across? Like whatever you wrote your book about, like what, what is your, your number one thing that you want to share? Um, well, the book is, um, is about childhood trauma and how, Mm -hmm even just the smallest incidences affect us our entire life. Yeah. Um, You know, just any little thing like, you know, my incident was, I have, it happened to me when I was nine and, you know, it wasn't even that traumatic, but it was enough to change my relationship to all men, including Mm -hmm. my own dad. And, you know, he was a good man, never did anything to me. But when, when one person that you're supposed to be able to trust hurts you, it forces you to pull away from everybody else. Yeah. So I've attracted from my mom, I've attracted from my dad, I've attracted from like, you know, you know, my uncles, any man really. Yeah. And so um, what trauma does to it, it, it um, causes you to create a false self in some sense, because before that I was this, you know, this happy go lucky little girly girl. I was very much in my feminine energy, always hanging on my dad and, you know, and just, you know, baby mm-hmm. dolls and all that thing. And then, when the trauma happened, I rooted into my own masculine because I couldn't trust the outer masculine, you know? So Mm -hmm. I rooted into my own masculine and I became my own protector. And I, you know, I stopped hanging on dad. I stopped, you know, I retracted from my parents and it affected my entire life and how I related to people. And it really wasn't that major of an incident, but it was enough. Yeah, it was enough. So, you know, And I spent most of my life downplaying it and saying, well, it wasn't that big of a deal. Wasn't that big of a deal. Wasn't that big of a deal. And it wasn't until, you know, last couple of years that I started to realize it it was a big deal, you know, really altered my relationships with every man forever, Mm -hmm. you know, until I've I've started to do this work and heal from it. And the book was a big part of that sitting down to write the book. Yeah, I bet. So like what, what types of things do you share in the book? Like what kind of book is it, I guess? Is it more like, you know, your story, like you're talking about, or is it like a a help, help you overcome this type of book or? Yeah, it's more, it's more my personal story. My, my, um, the, you know, the, um, the process that I went through throughout my life, you know, you know, where with relationships and, um, it, I, you know, it, with my writing, I tend to inject a little bit of, um, comic relief. Yeah. <laughs> so some yeah. of my relationship stories are kind of funny, you know, they're yeah. sad, but they're kind of funny. Yeah. But I mean, even though it's a serious topic, you know, I didn't want to make it too, too heavy, but yeah. I do, um, go into like, um, you know, the, the patriarchal conditioning and that kind of thing too. Um, cause I was mm-hmm. raised Catholic and there was a lot of guilt and fear and yeah. shame put into there. So I do talk about that a lot, um, and mm-hmm. boundaries and, you know, I do help, you know, put some stuff yeah, in to help people with the tools that they need to kind of overcome, you know, their own. And my biggest suggestion is writing, sitting down to write your book of you. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. Cause that that's a perfect point too. Even if you're not writing like a, here's how to overcome this, that's still like, it's still right. going to help people. Right. Just hearing that story and connecting exactly. and realizing you're not the only one going through stuff like that. Right. And that's what, that's what kind of the way it kind of came about for me too, because I was, um, I was watching a, an inter, uh, uh, it was a, no, it was a, it was a live Ted talk with, um, Psalm Isadora 
-hmm. and she was talking about her childhood trauma and um you know and that opened up so much for me like I I I was in tears you know and that that allowed me to connect to her and and see you know her story and I was like you know I really feel like it's time to to share mine you know so hearing her made me feel comfortable enough to speak up and that's kind of what I'm, I'm aiming to with the book for people to read it and say, you know, it's time for me to kind of, you know, realize that this was a bigger deal and yeah. it's, it's affecting my relationships and I need to kind of, to deal with it now because yeah. for so many years I didn't deal with it. Yeah. And I feel like now that I am dealing with it, I'll be able to have a healthier relationship, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how like everything is tied together, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I have, you know, just the, the limited psychology I I took in school, but it it is, it's, it's so crazy to see like how everything comes back in and, and it does, it totally affects your entire life, even if you don't realize it. So I think just recognizing that and making that conscious decision to, you know, think about things on a deeper level, like exactly like you're talking about is, is so, so important. I think, I think it's right. And, you know, like you said, for you, it's, it's writing that book and sitting down to write, or it might be, it might look different from other people, you know, for other people, maybe they go on stages and speak, or maybe they, you know, do two minute videos on Facebook, whatever it is. But I think, I think you're so right. Like just being willing to take a deeper look and and analyze yourself. Right. (laughs) Definitely. Cause I mean, the healing, the healing starts with us. And if you look at like what, what Gandhi said about, you know, be the change that you want to see in the world. Well, if you want to see a healthy, connected, balanced world, then you have to be that first. Yes. And then you have to have that kind of relationship and then you got to teach it to your children, yeah. you know, cause right now we have so many unhealthy people raising children and yeah. those children are going to grow up and, and raise unhealthy children. Exactly. And that's the <laughs> Yes, that's so that's a great point. (laughs) So um, Spice says this is so up my alley and exactly what I focus on in my program. Um, We should totally talk. Yeah. So connect with Spice after this. (laughs) But yeah, no, I I totally agree. And that that's, that's something that I don't hear people talk about enough too. like, not only is it hurting you, but you are passing that on your and it's never intentional of course we don't intend to fuck up our kids but it just happens sometimes right so that's a completely different perspective that people don't think about a lot so I love that yeah because when I look at my own childhood the things that I went through with my own mom I don't believe any of it was malicious she just had her own wounds and her own stuff that she never dealt with from her childhood and so it kind of manifested with me Yep. You know, so I don't think any of our parents intended to screw us up, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they kind of did. <laughs> yeah. It, it just happens sometimes. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's really, that's really cool. So can you tell us a little bit more about your book, like when it's coming out and how to get it and you know, all, all that um, good stuff? Yeah. I've probably got about maybe two more days of writing. It's almost done like a couple more chapters awesome. and then, um, I'm going to, I have to, it has to go through the developmental edit and then the, um, you know, the grammatical edit. Mm -hmm. So I know, I know it usually takes at least a month for the, for the first developmental edit, Mm -hmm. but um, I've been told like I can get the book cover done and do like a pre pre pre-sale launch. And so when I launch that, I'm also going to offer my, my first program that I had offered a few months ago was called childhood trauma and creation of the false self. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to offer that to those that pre-order, they're going to get that free. And that was like a four week program. So because I want them to kind of, because the, the, the program ties so heavily into the book, you know, a lot of the yeah. tools that are in program one on healing from trauma and those writing prompts really what helped me. So cool. um, for those that pre-order, I'm going to give that to them. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, that would be awesome. So like when, when you have that ready, you know, come back and share that in the group or find this video and put it in the comments or, um, and yeah. And I, I feel like to anyone that's watching this now or watching the replay, that's, you know, interested in learning more. Um, we can, we can get that information from you too. Um, I think your website, I think I put your website in the, in the event thing, but if you want to share too, just how to get in touch with you and then maybe a little more on, on the program and, and your, your coaching too, what, what type of, you know, who's your ideal client and, and what, what do you help them with, you know, your, your official little elevator pitch. (laughs) Um, yeah, my, my primary focus is helping clients overcome the Mm -hmm. obstacle the sacred intimacy. 
So for people that want to break through all of those um, conditioned ways and those traumas and, and be able to have that comp, like when you want to reach out to your partner and you're feeling awkward and yeah. you don't, instead of just like not saying anything and keeping it to yourself, you know, people that are healthy and balanced can have a conversation about it, you know, yeah. and they can address it because, you know, the, the number one thing is communication and yeah asking for what you want in that relationship. You can't claim you're not, you know, their par partner's not giving you what you want if you're not asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. I feel like, you know, we expect people to be psychic sometimes. And mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> I well, love we, that. Just, we, you know, we, we interpret what we think they, they, they're thinking or feeling yeah. based on our own projections. And it's not always correct. You know, yeah. like, we have all of these projections based off of our wounds. Yeah. So. Yes, I actually, it's so funny that you say it like that. I, I was just in a workshop on Friday with um, Sarah Elizabeth. She's in this group too. And she was talking about communications and, and saying exactly that. Like you're projecting your own <laughs> ideas and, you know, you, you can only, you can only believe what people are actually telling you. Right. So, mm -hmm. and you have to do the same. So I, I totally agree. I think that's so important. So your, so your coaching and your programs is, is about like teaching those skills mm -hmm. and how to do that and how to, right. how, how to, <laughs> yeah, to, to do the shadow work and really start, um, going into their own mind. And, mm -hmm. um, like for me, like I said, the main thing I try to help them with is the writing and the writing prompts. Um, the, F, I, the feedback that I got from the first program was that they love the writing prompts more than anything. I threw in like some, you know, psychobabble stuff in there <laughs> and they couldn't, they could care less about that. They just really love the writing prompts or like, you know, yeah. they, they had their aha moments as they were answering those questions. Yeah. And that, that was done to get them warmed up to write their book, you know? So I that's kind of that. like, you know, I'm just kind of helping them by giving them the same tools that I use. Yeah. You know? I love that. So I feel like too, that this would still be super helpful. Even if it, like, even if you're having these same issues, but you're not maybe you don't want to like publish a book and maybe you don't want to like share it with the whole world. I think it st would still be super helpful to just write it. Don't you think? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, cause when I started writing it, I wasn't sure that I was going to share it with everybody, Yeah, you know, but, um, yeah, it's just helpful to write it, you know, for yourself because, Absolutely. um, you know, sometimes like uh, if you've ever been around a friend that, you know, doesn't get out much, and they, they just I, I'm usually that friend. <laughs> I've been that friend too. But they don't get out much, but they don't conversate much. So they just want to tell you everything. Mm. So it's like, do that with yourself. Like, sit down and be your own friend. Be your own. You know, you sit down and 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 have a conversation with yourself through through the writing. And um, you know, you'll be surprised at how much you just start the blab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh my God! You know, I realize that you know, and it's 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 actually good to just write it thinking that it's just going to be for you. Yeah. Cause then it might turn into something else. You might want to, you might want to share it, yeah. but even if you don't, it's your, it's your own personal therapy, you yeah. know, really for you. I love so. that. I love that. So I see again, there are people watching. I'm like, I'm going to continue to call out people when you're watching and you haven't said hi, I need to know that you're here. So I see Christy and Tammy and Lamorla and Spice. If there's anyone else here say hi and let me know. But too, if you guys, do, if you guys have any questions for Jennifer now is now would be the time to ask. And um, so I just, I, I'm sure you're tired of me asking this over and over again, but <laughs> so like if somebody does want to work with you and your program, can you tell us about like the logistics of it? You keep, you, you've mentioned a program. Is it like a one-on-one -on -one coaching thing or you, you, it sounded like you might be talking about a group even, or kind of how does, how does that all work? Well, I haven't done the group stuff yet. I, I, okay. I created a group setting for the program that I offered, but nobody wanted to join that. Like a lot of people don't want a group setting when they're talking about their, their childhood right. traumas or rape or something like that. They don't right. want to, that, that makes sense. It's hard, enough, it's hard enough to do that one-on-one -on -one with someone, yeah. but so I primarily work one-on-one, -on -one, um, mm -hmm. you know, either by phone or zoom or, um, and, and in the program itself was a lot of written course material that I sent out like PDF files for them to work on. And then, you know, reach out to me and let me know, like, I, you know, touch base with them, give me the feedback. It's more guidance. It's more like, let yeah. me listen to you, everything that's going on with you. And I'm going to take it all in. I'm going to see how that feels and what I feel is going on with you. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ask you the right questions. I love it. And that's going to, you know, start opening some doorways for you and, yeah. and start you questioning yourself 
and and you're you know looking at all of that stuff and then writing it down and yeah. just the writing the writing so far has been the biggest thing for my clients I love it just those questions it's so powerful you're right I, I, I ask very like uncomfortable in-depth questions yeah. <laughs> you know I've done that yeah. on dates, which is why I don't usually have a second date with people <laughs> So like, but eventually you're going to get to that right one. <laughs> right. She wants to know everything on the first yeah. date. Like, <laughs> so Man, I, I totally um, agree. <laughs> a lot of those questions are like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that question. I'm like, well, you know, it's kind of important. Think about it, you yeah. know? Yeah, for sure. I love that. So Spice wants to know, do you only work with women? No, I work with men, women, couples. Yeah. Anybody. Okay. Good to know. That's a, that's a good thing to know too. I feel like, oh, like, a lot of, a lot of people only work with women. And I think that's, you know, that's great if that's what you're called to do, but I do think that's an important question to ask because a lot of times people only work with women now. So well, actually most of my clients have been men. It's mostly yeah. the men that have, um, you know, just have, you know, performance issues or, mm-hmm. um, you know, just, you know, something sexually related. And that's how we get on the conversation because they're, you know, they're having bedroom issues. Yeah. And then, they realize, you know, when I start talking to them, I realize, well, it's not always physical. Sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's mental. Yeah. You know? So it's not, you don't always have to go reach for that little blue pill. It could be something else. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let's talk about that and see what it is. And for a lot of them, it, it was like, wow, yeah, I can, you know, I could see that. And, you know, like one guy, he went, he, he, you know, finally was able to have that conversation with his girlfriend and, you know, he's like, wow, that was so easy. I'm like, why wasn't it easy for the last 10 years though? (laughs) Yeah. Have have somebody push you sometimes and and guide you through that. Absolutely. I love that. Well, cool. Okay. So if anyone has any more questions, you know, during the replay, put them in, make sure, um, if it's a question for Jennifer, make sure to tag Jennifer so she sees it. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I just want to say a huge thank you for coming in and sharing. I think this is such an important topic to, <laughs> to bring up because not a lot of people talk about this stuff. So I think it's totally awesome. I'm really excited for, for you to get your book out and, and share your message with even more people. And I would love to have you, you know, come back in and share, share the link, share all, this, all the goodies you were mentioning earlier um, that you get if you get the book. And just thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, (laughs) I'm so glad. So yeah, um, anyone watching then again, say hi, let us know that you're here. Let us know, you know, if if this, if you have any aha moments watching this um, and reach out to Jennifer, if you have any questions or if you want to work with her, her information is is in the events tab or you can, you know, just click on her name (laughs) in this video and it'll take you to her profile. So thank you again so, so much for coming in. This has been awesome. And I hope everyone else enjoyed it as much as I have. And we will see you all soon. Great. Bye.